real people, real stories, real f***ing life. The Relentless Project. And now, your host, the man on a mission to ignite your inner fire, Ish Lopez. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be inspired. I appreciate you for jumping on, Britt. Um, yeah. We're here at Stout. This is like your your stomping grounds. Mm-hmm. Um, what you're part of the fight team, right? What what is the Stout fight team? Because I, I I've seen the Instagram page just pop up. I've seen a lot of like the heavy hitters at the gym like featured on it. What what's the Stout fight team? So the Stout fight team is. It's a mix of like our, so it's mainly like for the Instagram page, it mainly highlights our MMA guys and and girls um, basically doing amateur fights. We have pros coming up now in the Stout Fight team, Um, but also highlights like some of our Muay Thai guys. Sometimes we'll, you know, I think it's kind of like it could be collectively as a whole. So like jujitsu competitors, Muay Thai competitors and MMA competition. If we're talking about like just the stout fight team under Mike Wilkins, because it, it is the MMA team under Mike Wilkins. Uh, the, the Mike Wilkins. The <laughs> Mike Wilkins. And, and, and the stout fight team page kind of really highlights the MMA aspect of the gym and in the uh, competitors for MMA. But when, when it comes to like practice and um, the fight team as a whole, there's a lot of background people in that as well like the jiu-jitsu guys will help us with you know the jiu-jitsu aspect we Thai guys will cross train with us we cross train with them all the time like we're basically a whole together as a as a team but also just the stout fight team kind of like the instagram page is a lot of the mma team as well so it's like one cohesive unit of just everyone who competes competitively in some shape or form for stout yeah yeah and is there like fixed practices or or do you guys just come in and, and kind of hit each other up? Hey, we're, we're going to work on wall stuff today. Yeah. Like, how's that work? So when I started here, I think Stout Fight Team has, like, grown, like, incredibly, especially in the past year. Like, our fight team's popping right now. We have. Oh, I mean, I don't want to say it. I'm not biased, but what? one of the best in the city. It is. I mean, it, and, like, we love, you know, everybody that we cross train with. You know, Factory, Academy, you know, they all have great teams as well. And we're basically one when it comes down to it. But. Um, so when I first started the, the fight team, it, it kind of like would fluctuate. We would have like, you know, a lot of MMA people. And I heard like in the past, it would go up and down how many people were competing. Um, and I think just like, as of recent, it's just kind of grown to this huge, like class of people that will, um, that are looking to compete and take it serious. So we have a fight team practice on Tuesday night that Mike will run and it's like a practice. It's a legit practice. You have to have the go-ahead to go to that class or practice. You can't just, like, be like, hey, it's my first day here. I would love to do this. Uh, Unless, you know, if you come with some background, like, obviously, we'll say yes. But everything's ran by Mike and Will. um, So it's it's definitely, like, a, a structured practice. And I would say the Tuesday night MMA practice is, like, the hardest one that I'll do of the week. It's a very, very uh, tough practice as well. Yeah, so you got to be asked to go, huh? Yeah. I'm just waiting for my... No, I'm kidding. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, that's dope. Hop in. Um, uh, so I asked you to be on because you, you kind of encompass a lot of the things that I... When I started this podcast, I wanted... Not I wanted, but I, I was honored to interview people who exhibit, you know, perseverance and relentlessness and, and all aspects of their life. And one thing that, my, you know, you're fighting and all that stuff, that... that that's a whole other level too. But one thing that really caught my attention is how you just like decided to just go a hundred percent into the fight world, which is hard to do. A lot of people still maintain like their day job or their career or their side gig or whatever. You just like, I want to fight. Yeah. And, and you like jumped into it. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about before you decided to fight, like what was little Brit? Oh man! What was what, Brit? what was wow. mini Brit? What 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 got you into wanting to train, wanting to practice, and then not even that, just deciding. What was that deciding factor for you to go? Hey, this is something I want to lean into all the way. Yeah. Well, 
little Brit. Did you know I played football? Did I saw a picture. Yeah. I did see a picture. <laughs> and I also saw a picture. You said something about, on your Instagram about McDonald's. Yeah. Like, you yeah. just did it all. Yeah. How was football? Yeah. Football was like my passion. It was like my favorite sport. So growing up, I had three brothers and we grew up in the country. I grew up in like the middle of nowhere, very small town. And uh, so I, I can't remember when I was like, I want to play football, but I was young. So I did it for a long time. It was like time. Peewee, right? Yeah, Peewee I football, saw, yeah. Screaming Eagles, Southern Tioga. And so we all played football. And um, I think I always loved how like tough it was it was really fun to like you're tackling and you're doing all that stuff and, and I thought that was a lot of fun and I loved football um so basically and then when I was in seventh grade I tore my ACL so always happens, wild. Young. yeah that's yeah. great we had you know what I I, I I got I think twice about the chicks who play football yeah because the chicks who decide to play football always are like heavy hitters oh yeah we had we had a girl kayla and like all the boys would look at her i'm like oh you know boys young young boys aged or naive this chick would truck every kid in her way i'm talking like bulldoze through them and i'm like man i'm so glad she's on my team because she was just nuts yeah like nuts and if you decide to do that and you surround yourself by like People with the same mentality, like, yeah, just truck through everything. Yeah, yeah. So football tore your ACL. Yeah. And then <laughs> what? Like, wild. yeah, like at se- in seventh grade? Yeah, so it was a father-daughter basketball game. And it was just like a fun, like, junior high thing that, like, I was – so I knew that I, like, was – I had to be done playing football. Like, once I got older, but I was like, I'm going to play in eighth grade. And then probably ninth grade, I'm going to, like, you know, guys start to – Get meet up yeah and i'm gonna be a little brit still <laughs> so i'm gonna have to stop so that was gonna be my last year it was eighth grade and um it was junior high basketball i went up for a rebound like just some fun game father-daughter event and my knee like gave out and i tore my acl and my meniscus and that was like the first experience and i was so young and i don't think i realized it till i grew up a little bit and um kind of looked back at that time that was kind of like my first like real adversity in life because I was so young and back then I mean you remember when you're playing sports as a kid like it's everything playing yeah. sports as a kid it is like your life I couldn't wait to play games no matter what sport I was in couldn't wait for game day couldn't wait to play couldn't wait to go to practice hang out with my friends and then boom I had this serious injury and I was just like pulled out from it it was just taken away from my life and I was like what do I do you know And so it took me two years to get surgery because I was still growing. And in order to get to, like, the ACL to reconstruct it, they have to drill through your growth plates. And so every, like, three months I would go get an X-ray to see if I was done growing. And they'd be like, no. And it was just, like, heartbreak over. So, like, even I couldn't play sports, but I couldn't even, like, do gym class because I had no ACL. Yeah, there's not much you can do. And, like, at that age, it's crazy because, like, when kids get hurt, like, they don't understand – the, like the world and how the world works and how life is right like yeah. we understand as adults we get hurt we re, re, re rehab it's gonna get better eventually it will be good as a kid when you get hurt you're like this is it yeah this is the rest of yeah. my life like <laughs> yeah. i'm always gonna be like this i'm always gonna feel yeah. this pain it's like my daughter's 11 and like she hurt her ankle years ago until this day she's like oh i, I can't play soccer because my ankle we'll be in jujitsu class oh but, but my ankle i'm like Jenna, your ankle's fine. Yeah. Like, it's been fine. You're yeah. going to be good. Yeah. But as a kid, that that's all you think of oh, is, yeah. like, that injury, that pain. It's so like, how were you able to, like, push through yeah. that and decide, like, now you freaking fight. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. You, like, <laughs> fight. Like, dude, if I tore my ACL, I'd, I ain't even walking. I'll use that as an excuse. I'm not even walking. I'm taking a wheelchair everywhere. Yeah. Can't hurt it again. I, I don't think you would. You would bounce back. But. I like to think you're, so. You're relentless. So. But, uh, yeah, I mean. The plug. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to, like, look back. I think it's just, like, it pained me so much to sit out of games. And I would just, like, tell my friends. I'm, like, like I understood at a young age that doing something you love could be taken away at any moment. And, like, you're going to be watching from the sideline. And, like, remember that when you're at practice and you don't want to be there or, like, 
you have to go to a game, you don't feel like it or something like that. Because it, at, at such a young age, I like experienced watching from the sideline of something that like was my life at the time. You know what I mean? So I think that motivated me whenever I was sitting out. I was like, I, I never thought of like, oh, I'll never be back. I was like, I can't wait to be back. I can't wait to do this. I'm so excited to do it again. You already had that mindset. Yeah. Then. That's crazy. Yeah. It's like a lot of, that happens to a lot of adults right now, too. Like we sit on the sideline and we watch the life we want. Yeah. And we're like, man, or or, you know, what, what what's worse? The remember when's man. Remember, remember when we used to do remember when it's like, why don't you why can't you do that now? Yeah. Yeah. Like watching from the sidelines is tough. And I remember I was in I had a shoulder, uh, a stinger okay. when I played football in high school. And we in the area was called the Save and I game. It was when all the city kids played all the county kids. And I'd injured my shoulder and I wasn't able to play. And I'm telling you, it was like I had tears in my eyes. I'm like, yeah. I can't believe like this is it and I'm done. And like that sucks watching from the sideline. Yeah. And you were able to like jump back. And you didn't get back in the back, but now look what you're doing. You yeah. you've, you've you've taken that mentality and that joy of playing sports and you've applied it to you know, jujitsu and MMA, and now you're like competing. You yeah. just got signed. It's wild. My life's wild. I like can't believe it. It's funny because like I see you in passing, and like I see your Instagram and stuff, and I hear uh, you know we we talk in passing, and I hear people talk about you, but like you see you in person, you're just like yeah yeah. I see why they call you Sunshine, right? Is that why you're yeah. just like? Well, the Sunshine was like uh, it actually came from like a reggae song, which is like. I think the name is Matt Asayu, the guy that sings it. And this was, like, before I even started fighting, when I was just starting to train and, like, thought about fighting. And me and my roommate, Sam, at the time, were, like, driving to work. We're like, oh, this is a great song. She's like, that should be your fight name, Sunshine. Because, like, you know. And I was like, I really like that. And I, like, took it. Because I think, and, and okay, other people, you can be whatever you want. Don't care. I personally could not be, like, Britney the Destroyer Bick Carter. You know what I mean? Like, it just is so... Rings. I mean, it rings. It rings. <laughs> so I liked how Sunshine was, like... I'm never, like, rude. Like, I'm... I, I, and also, when I look at a fight, it's, like, a game to me. I just want to win. I do struggle with, like, I'm going to hurt you. I want to hurt you so bad. Like, I'm not, like, I want to go in there and hurt you. I'm like, oh, I'm... I have to hurt you in order to win. I want to win this game right now. That's a good way to put so, it. Yeah, I'm got to do what I got to do to yeah. be on top at the end. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, sports. Yeah. Little Mickey Brit. D's. What'd you do Brit. for McDonald's? What oh, did little Britt do for McDonald's? Dude. So, I was in ninth grade, or freshman year of college, okay? Needed a job. Uh, I think it was summer break or it was some type of break where I was at my dad's house and he's like yeah you got a job I'm like all right I was striking out a lot of places for like waitressing and, and I was just like well can't beggars can't be choosers gotta go to McDonald's because that's the one that took me so I started out there and uh well I had like you know a waitressing job in high school before then but this was like a different town so I started at McDonald's in Sarah PA at my dad's house worked there really understood what it like it's weird because at the time, it, it, if I look at now working at McDonald's, I'm like, wow, how did I ever do that? But at the time, I just did it. And I like kind of just made the best of it. Like it wasn't the best job in the world, but it also like, I think it also wasn't the entire worst job in the world. Cause like when you're there, do you want to just be miserable or just kind of like, well, I'm getting paid, making money. So it was definitely interesting working at McDonald's for sure, That's as tough. you can imagine. Man, that fast food industry is tough. Dude. You got people who constantly scream at you, yell Dude, at people you. People treat you like crap. Crap, it's like, crazy. I, like even how now, bad they treat I you. see that. Like, I, I, my first, my first legit job, I'll say that. <laughs> my first legit job on paper was Golden Corral. Okay. And I started as a cashier, and I, I, I have the mindset of like. Whatever I'm doing, I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability. Yeah, I'm gonna be happy because, like, I see it as an opportunity. Like, I get to do this. Not a lot of people get to work. Like, I don't care what job I have. Like, I'm, I'm glad I have a job. I was a cashier. I was also in college. Then I got moved to the bakery, which was like the worst thing you could do. You ever like 
had to clean out a chocolate fountain because a no. kid put a chicken nugget in it. No, that sounds horrible. Miserable. Yeah. But like I did it and I'm like happy, joyous. Yeah. And people are like, bro, how, how can you do this? I'm like, bro, I'm here for, I'm getting paid for eight hours. Yeah. I can be here miserable. Yeah. Or I can sing a song and make people laugh as I'm cleaning out this chocolate fountain because a kid put a french fry in it. Yeah. Like, and that's the mentality you have. I look at fast food workers. You ever seen, like, when you're ordering, you ever look back there? Yeah. Oh, They're yeah. just, like, bouncing, bouncing, going, yeah. going, going. It, it, it's it's like an assembly line. It's a drill line. Yeah. Like, yelling, two patties, and Dude, they're, it's not they're easy. going. It's not. It's crazy. And I realized, like, think about this, and I never thought about it. Drive through windows, okay? They'd always put me, they called it the hole. Like, we're at jail, and they put me in the hole, right? Like, all right, brick, brick car, you're in the hole today. So I go to the hole. All right, if it's winter time, that drive through window sucks because it constantly opens up. You're freezing cold, you're counting money. Also, when you're ringing people up and you're counting money, people are ordering at the same time. Yeah, that is true. And you're doing true. both things. And I'm like, wow, people don't understand. This actually got hard. So, yeah. Requires a lot. That that does, yeah. Now that you mentioned that, like when you're, hey, one second. Yeah. You get to the window, the person taking your money and making your drinks is the person ordering, like taking yeah. the next person's yeah. order. I'm like. Yeah. Damn. It was nah. tough. It was tough. I, you know, I persevered through it. So yeah, it no, comes. that's awesome. So like. What, what did you take anything from that? Because there's a lot of lessons oh, you can take yeah. from I mean, like multitasking and just yeah. endurance. You need yeah. like mental endurance to one deal with people. Yeah, people could be ugly. Yeah, two to just be able to balance like balance all that stuff. Yeah, I think it, I think the biggest thing that I took from it was that I really appreciated the next step in my life, which how I got to training, which is working at a gym. I appreciated that job so much because it allowed me to quit McDonald's. And I was like, wow, like, uh, you know, I took, you know, life lessons from it. Just like having a job, you learn, you know, you got to show up on time. You got to, you know, we were short staffed sometimes, got to work a lot. I was in college. I was a full time student. Um, and just kind of like letting your ego aside and working for McDonald's. I can't be ego like big ego in there. It's pretty most humbling experience ever. I remember like looking at myself and in the mirror at like a bathroom break or maybe just like a regular break and I was like wow look at you McDonald's visor like imagine look like looking at I was like wow look at you but I knew it was just like the start of my life I, something I had to do I was humble enough where I had to get a job and I wasn't too good for McDonald's it's really could, what yeah, it came that's down a good, to that's a good way to look yeah. at it like yeah. you can't be too good for anything yeah because as soon as you become too good for something you're going to be humble yeah yeah and then you're not good enough for any, anymore yeah um, so what gym did you work at that, that got you into like the training? So this is how this happened. All right. I'm ready for it. So I'm sure everyone, every, no. when I've told a select few people about you being on here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> really? Like, so like, I'm excited wow. for, I'm, I'm excited for, to see like how people take, cause like not a lot of people know, like they know Brit. Yeah. But they don't really know Brit. Yeah. They know Brit in training. They know Brit in passing. They know, but like. I yeah. think now they'll really get to know what what turns your wheels. Yeah. All right. Well, so take it back when I was working at McDonald's, I'm working the cashier. Some guy comes through the line. This is now when I'm working. So I, I transferred to the Lock Haven McDonald's because I went back to school for that year. And um, he comes through the line and he was the gym owner of just like a workout gym. So and I'll, I'll explain that later on. He wasn't like the jujitsu owner. And he was like, oh, you look like you hate your job. And I was like, well, you know, I'm working at McDonald's, so uh, what do you think? You know what I mean? <laughs> Could be doing something <laughs> else, if that's what you're implying. So he's like, oh, you know, I have this gym. Would you like to work for me? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, yeah, like, that sounds great. And I was about to leave for winter break. I was like, well, I'm going to leave for winter break. I have to go back home. But when I come back for the spring semester and I stay through the summer, I was like, I definitely will work for you. Held his word. I hit him up when I came back. He's like, yep, I remember you, of course. So I was working the front desk. And um, I, I very much appreciate the opportunity from said gym owner. But it uh, was definitely an interesting place. It was, uh, it's not stout, you know. I didn't start out of stout. I'll just put it like that. And so I was working the front desk and I'm like, what? And I, cause I worked at McDonald's. So I didn't care what anything looked like. I was not working at McDonald's and I was happy about that. So the jujitsu guys 
this guy named Ryan Brinkman moved here from Florida, black belt from Florida. Um, and he started a jujitsu gym on the third floor. And when I say gym, it was just a room with mats on it, basically. It's all you need sometimes. And that's how it started. And so he, uh, they would come down from training and they'd be like, I didn't know what jujitsu was. I didn't watch the UFC. I had no idea what they were doing. And they're like, oh, you should come train, blah, blah, blah. Because they'd see me on the way out. And I was like, ah, I don't really want to be a fighter or that doesn't really interest me. And I kind of like turned it down for a little while until he finally, like one of the guys convinced me to just like, just try it out. And I tried a boxing class, like a, like a fitness class with me and my friend. And it sounds so like official. It was just me and her in the said class. And we just like hit mitts with each other and they showed us very basic things. And I was, I liked it. I liked the workout. So I started out just kind of like doing it as like a workout, like, you know, training. I didn't do jujitsu for a little while because it grossed me out. I was like, oh, I don't want to roll around with people sweaty. sweaty. People. Yeah. Like, that looks gross to me. That's usually the first thing people that. say. <laughs> <laughs> now I love it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like then it just kind of snowballed into I tried jujitsu out and then I could compete in jujitsu and I wanted to fight MMA and then it just kind of became just overtook me you know so that's how it started my first jiu-jitsu class so i like trained mma in college it was like this basement and we were just like there was a cage that's all i, I was like this is mma and we just knocked each other around in this cage and i started to learn whatever but i never really like dove into jiu-jitsu like there was a jiu-jitsu guy who would come in teach us some things and then we i'm like no nah, i want to throw punches then we throw punches and then I, I joined law enforcement. I joined the adopt a cop program, mm -hmm. um, and I was like, you know what? I need to like, I need to hit this more serious because my job kind of requires me to be able to control people. And I was looking around gyms, and just stout kept popping up. Stout kept popping up. And it was like three years ago, I believe. And I walk into this. I walk in. <laughs> there's a big group of people in a circle, and I'm like. And I'm late, of course. I'm like five minutes late. Everyone's in a circle already. And I'm like, fuck, man. Here it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like 220 pounds. Yeah. Everyone weighs like 150, 160. Yeah. I'm like, oh, we're, we're going to see. We're going to see. I come in. And this is my first official class. I've tried other gyms. Um, I'll, I'll go into that too. But I come in and everyone's like, oh, no, just, just no, no, come on in. We're, we're just getting started. And from that, I'm like, the, the it was Wilkins teaching, mm. and his instruction is like, dude could teach a monkey how to do jujitsu. Oh, yeah. yeah, his mm -hmm. like you're like you can't mess that up. Like yeah. oh, that uh, that hand, that's the one I'm working with. Okay, up, oh, it's going there. He's really clear with his instruction. Mm -hmm. And then we do like a little live roll at the end, and I got paired with like, a, dude, it's just like a 120 pound chick, 130, real small. Yeah, I'm like, oh, like I don't want to hurt her. Yeah. She was a blue belt. When I tell you my whole life was reevaluated after yeah. that class, she was like, <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, oh. I'm like, I'm, I pull one thing off. She's got another thing. And I'm like, by the next thing you know, I'm like exhausted. I'm like, I need, I, there's some, I need to do something with yeah. my life. And that's what I, I dove into it. And I'm like, jujitsu is really the equalizer yeah. in, in, in the world. Yeah. Like, you it doesn't matter well it reaches a point where weight and, and oh, experience all that least, but yeah, like yeah. if you have two similar body types two similar that jujitsu having that jujitsu experience is going to be the the night and day for example if you're in the cage yeah you're essentially paired up with someone in your body weight mm -hmm. skill level may change but having that jujitsu background the jujitsu fundamentals and stuff the equalizer yeah yeah Wow, a lot of good stuff. Wow. <laughs> so after that, what? So you you joined this jujitsu gym. Yeah. Well, you joined the jujitsu portion. Yeah. How did you get here? What led you to the <sighs> golden standard uh, of stout? Well, actually, a long time ago, when I started doing jujitsu competitions, I uh, did an in-house tournament here, but it was at Stout, but it was at the one where they were still at the strip down the street, like. You had to take an elevator up to get there. I don't know if you ever... Like, was it Lawrenceville? 
No, I think Not it was like down the street from here. Okay. Like still at the strip. I think it was the location right before they moved here. Um, I just remember I had to go like up an elevator to get there. And it, it definitely wasn't this place. But uh, so still very nice. But I uh, did an in-house tournament there. And Ryan, the, the black belt that I was under at the time, like talked the gym up. And like he was promoting. So, you know, like they're like celebrities to me. So like I walk in. He was like, yeah, that's Mike Wilkins. I think that's when he was getting ready for a bell tour. He was getting ready for something that like amazed me. And I was like, I remember Mike giving a rules meeting and looking at him. And I was like starstruck. I was like, oh my God, that's a professional fighter right there. Like, a professional, wow, yeah. Like, that's crazy. And so I did the in house tournament. Do you know Mary, who's a brown belt here? She's very good, but she kind of trains at like odd times. So I don't know if you'd run into her. I'm usually like either afternoon, like noon. Yeah. Or late at night. Okay. So. So she's uh she she's really good. Um, both of us were blue belts at the time, and we went against each other. And it's crazy looking back now because there's so many people that were like in the pictures from that tournament that I know really well now that I had no idea who they were back then. So me and like the team that I was on came here to Stout, did that in-house tournament. And so I knew about Stout and I like really respected Stout because of how it st like started was just like this small grungy gym, you know, no AC, no heat. Like it was just what I was used started to. Started from the bottom so as they it say. It was huh? crazy coming here. <laughs> so I had uh, um, the opportunity to move out here and um, got a job with probation and uh, like for the county. And I was like, all right, well, I got to find somewhere to train. Stout knew it already. I was like, I'm going to go check out their facility. So when I walked in here, I was like, wow, this is crazy. This gym right here that we're in right now, I was like, this is unreal. It's insane. Yeah. It's like, and, and every one of the, like, it's yeah. not just this it's one. It's all of them, yeah. Any one that you walk into, you're like, damn. Yeah. And I've been to a lot of, like, other gyms and stuff. And they all, you know, every gym has their own little niche. And, and but walking in here, like, the environment is just like all the instructors all like you see you walk in before class and there's people getting after it like you're like damn like this place is go 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 like this, yeah. is, this is where i need to be yeah that's how i felt immediately coming out and i tried other gyms i won't name them because the one gym i just like i go in there and they're like hey do you have any jujitsu experience i'm like no i always say no like even if i've trained a little bit because I don't. Like, yeah. I, I, I was just me, master. I have no formal experience. And I tell them this. They're like, well, do you have any experience? I'm like, well, I used to wrestle and grapple. Okay. They pair me up with someone, and dude's immediately trying to, like, murder me. No, yeah. I'm like, dude, what the fuck's this dude's problem? Like, he, he cross-faced me. Like, dude, I start bleeding. I'm like, yeah. is this what the fuck jiu-jitsu is? Yeah. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. I'm like fighting for my life on my first day. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, this is crazy. The next day I go, same thing. I'm like, what are these people's problem? Yeah. So I, I wait off, get, get into the adopt a cop program, and come here, and it's immediately a whole different vibe. Like, you know, the one I remember, um, I think it was Mike on my second class. He goes, hey, like, be a good training partner. If you don't want to be a good training partner, I'll be your partner. And I'm mm. like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, because it's, it's fundamentals class. Yeah. You know, it's like we're, we're learning technique. We're le And then in live, sure, pick it up. Yeah. And, and you, 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 I got that sense of like when we're learning technique, we're learning technique. In live, let's pressure test it. Let's yeah. apply it. And that's how like I learned too. It's like let's go through the motions and then let's roll with it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this facility is insane. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. What – uh, you were with the county and then you went to the state – Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what things did you pick up from there? <laughs> she's, she's, not, she's like, man, I, she's like, I ain't with them no more. <laughs> no, I mean, it was good working there. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was all right. Yeah. yeah. It, it's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it explains it. Self-explanatory in our yeah. world. Um, I actually saw you at Chief's, Chief's funeral. Yeah. yeah. That's when I, that, that's when I was like, oh man, she's yeah. in something. Yeah. Which is, it, it's crazy. Cause like, you don't realize a lot of cops and or, or like people who work for the state, law enforcement, any form. Like, yeah, some of them train outside and they heavy hitters. Yeah, and I got to see you. I'm like, yeah. I knew it. I knew something <laughs> was in her. Like, you don't just become a dog like that. Like, so yeah. and then and then I see you post online that you like 
quit. Quit. I'm like, Easy. well, shit. Hey, Easy. how was that? Like, that's got to be a. Uh, uh, I don't want to say scary, but it's a big oh, jump yeah. to have that like, that security and that safe net and like, and then just go all in in this. What was that deciding factor for you? Hmm. Well, um, after because you know like working for state level it took a lot of years to like get there. I like uh, you know started out of jail, then I worked for probation at that county, then I moved out here worked for the county, so I had experience. And then I tried out for the state and I got in and it's kind of like the, Oh yeah, made you it made it. State. it. Yeah. You like, made it. Like, like, yeah, I'm you're set. Good. Like pension, 30 years done. Good benefits. Like you've made it. I'm like, I'm young. Like, this is awesome. I'm making money, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, after my last fight, um, against Sarah flowers for the, for the championship belt, um, Mike and Will kind of sat me down and it was kind of like opportunity. I had an opportunity to work here full time that they had an opening at the time um, that they either had to fill or it was kind of like, hey, you kind of like got to let us know. Hey, that was wild. That was wild. I mean, you, did you need to scream <laughs> Bless when you, you did it? Like, so anyway, um, yeah. So long story short, he, uh, they were like, you know, here's this opportunity, blah, blah, blah. And I, at first I was like, man, I don't know about quitting my job. Like that is a big, because I like worked hard to get to the state. Yeah. It's another part of my life that I like, you know, was really full in on. And um, I'll never forget Mike was talking to me about it. And he was like, you won't, I don't think you will. And this wasn't like they believe in me 100%. But he was like, I don't think you will make it if you don't do this. Because eventually you're going to like, run into girls who are about that life who have sacrificed who it, train and they do it 100%, train all the time. yeah and i really see that now that i am training all the time like wow i've improved greatly but the deciding factor was tough i mean i like really thought long and hard about it i talked to my girlfriend about it i talked to my parents and my family about it and I kind of knew I was going to do it all along, but I kind of just need other people to tell me it's going to be okay. You need like that like yeah. uh, reinforcement yeah. of like, all right, this decision I'm making, all right, it's the yeah. right one. Because, I mean, um, looking like looking in the future, it, it, I think I would have really regretted it my whole life, wondering what if I did it. Like, did, what if I quit my and I did it? You know what I mean? And if I didn't do it, I was going to regret it forever. You know, because I'll never know what it would have been like if I quit my job, you know, so. And I spoke about this on my last episode. Um, people always have like a fear of failure, right? Um, but like to me, like failure is just it's just a step in the learning process. The real fear, like for me anyway, is that like regret that what if that because you can't you can't get that back mm -hmm. if you fail. You can bounce back, you can learn, you can improvise, you can adapt, and then try again. Mm -hmm. But if you, 10 years down the road, you're sitting there, you're like, man, what if I would have mm -hmm. went all into my MMA career? Yeah. You can't now. And that's sad. Yeah, and you can't that's now so because you're 10 scary. years down the road. Yeah. You don't, you're, you're not young and healthy like you were. You don't have that prime experience. Like, w what if I would have done that? Mm -hmm. Like, where would my life be? Mm-hmm. And I talked to Mike about that on the phone. We talked a lot before, and I was like, oh, I like don't want to be 50-year-old Brit and be like, regret my decision. He's like, you're going to regret if you don't do it. I think that's what 50-year-old Brit would think. And I was like, wow, it's really, uh, that's really, um, that really like hit me. I was like, wow, I totally get what you're saying. And I, th I think also I was just like, a, I was afraid of like what people thought I was doing. Like I thought people that I worked with were gonna think I'm crazy. Like, oh, this girl just started. I was like nine months in, I graduated the academy, started and basically quit right away. And I, want, I was like, these people are gonna think I'm crazy. Like I'm stupid for doing it. And I was kind of afraid to tell people. And I was talking to one of my good friends that he was like a coworker, Pete. He's awesome. He's just like really funny. And he was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, that's horrible. <laughs> That's horrible. Of course it happens. <laughs> Wait. Okay, there we go. Ah, we're back. There we go. 
Hey, that's hey, authentic. authenticity. It doesn't man. It's matter. A, yeah, we don't, we overcome. We overcome. <laughs> She's the real winner. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, we're sitting down with Pete. All right, we like served warrant that morning, long morning. We're talking at a coffee shop. You know, he's like, um. I was like, well, I don't know, like, it's just so risky of doing this. Like, this is a huge risk that I'm taking. Like, what do you think? And he's like, isn't that, like, what makes it worth it? And I was like, wow, Pete. Like, I'm like, Damn, I was like from heavy a movie, hitter, bro. <laughs> I didn't even have my coffee yet, bro. Damn. <laughs> and I was like, that is, like, really. He's like, look at what we just did. Now, I, I like, liked my job, and I liked a lot of aspects of it. He's like, do you, like, totally love what we just did? And I was like, No. He's like, look what you could be doing. And I'm like, you're right. You're totally right. So um, it definitely was. And it's still like, you know, um, haven't like made it. I'm not like, in my mind, this is, you know, something I struggle with. I'm like, oh, I'm not anything yet. So like. Um, that imposter syndrome yeah, you're talking about. Still a struggle that I have every day. Like of, I quit my job for this. Like. But it's also that probably gives me an edge that I probably wouldn't have had before. Of you quit your job for this, like you better do everything you can. Well, not yeah, that yeah. that all in mentality of like yeah, you, you have nothing to lose. Yeah, you already you you didn't lose. You gave it up. I chose to give. Yeah, it up. like and that's it. Like yeah. that is true. That yeah. that that's that edge that you need. And that like, hey, I, I gave up state pension, state like yeah. I I won't lose this. Yeah. And I spoke with Lou. Um, and he mentioned like being that being process oriented and not result oriented. Yeah. And you may not see that now because you're in the you're in the process. Yeah. Like it don't matter where you end up. Well, it does. But like that's not your focus. Your focus is Tuesday training. Yeah. And then the next class and that being that process oriented yeah. and and, and and investing in your process and seeing the process unfold as you speak, because I'll say this firsthand and everyone watching and listening can be a witness. When your name is mentioned, it is great things. No one goes, Britt, oh yeah, she I. Yeah. She's or Britt, right. uh, she, yeah, she could be better. Yeah. Like no, no one talks about you like that. It's always Britt. Yeah, dude, dude, she's fire. She's dope as a person. She's, she can fight. She can roll. She, it's always good things. Yeah. So, Keep that in mind of like, I mean, you always had the dog in you, which is good. But like, keep yeah. that process oriented. How is it being in the, like in a male dominated industry? Because yeah. like MMA has been a male dominated industry for the longest time, and I, I love seeing all the women coming up in the ranks. And yeah, you just got signed with an Invicta, and that's mm -hmm. what all pro women, right? Yeah, like, all women. Yep. That's yeah. got to be dope because yeah. like you, it, it's essentially throwing you into the fire of yeah. like. Here it is. Yeah. This yeah. is what I'm doing, and, and I'm surrounded by people doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, So Invicta's real cool, and so I'll come back to Invicta. But for in regards to, like, the male-dominated, um, you know, and also, like, probably, like, law enforcement was male dom. Yeah, male that's another career, yeah. How it's kind of, like, where I started to – like, I was training by the time I worked at the jail, but um, I don't know. I guess, like – and I say, like, you know, stout really is wonderful. So I don't deal with it here. But you, I don't know. And I think, like, a lot of girls might relate to this. You kind of just, I get so this is how I look at it. I learn to just show who I am and what I'm capable of. Like, I don't have to tell you. When I came here, I told Will, I remember seeing him. You know, there was, like, Muay Thai class going on it was like noon when I came to sign up and they're like oh yeah you can talk to Will about maybe joining the fight team because I had experience coming in here and I was like oh yeah I have, I have like a couple fights blah 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 and then like when I first started here I like wasn't like I'm Br I'm Brittany Beckhart I'm like the best ever it's I'm, Brittany, I've, bitch. <laughs> I've fought three times or was it yeah I've fought three times I know what I'm doing I just was quiet and I was like who I am is gonna show I'm gonna get respect for it it was like that with work too, you know? Like you're gonna get, like you know how some of the guys are in law oh, enforcement. Yeah. I just listen. I'm like, I'm gonna listen, that's fine. You want to, like, uh, you kinda always 
I don't know, maybe you're belittled a little bit, like, I don't know how to do this one thing, or you just assume I don't know, so you want to teach me all the time. I don't know. It, it, does that kind of make, make sense? It does, because especially in law enforcement, and I'll say it's like, it's very ego-driven. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get a lot of, like, bad light. Like, mm -hmm. It's a lot of type. If you're joining law enforcement, essentially you have type A personality. Like it re that's it's a requirement almost. Like, mm -hmm. but it's uh, with that comes a lot of egos, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And when your ego is checked, and and men, some men have this. Like, it, when we feel threatened, right? Mm -hmm. And when there's a woman mm -hmm. doing what I can do, it's almost like, oh my god, like I should be better. Mm -hmm. It's like. Yeah, that's should a good you? point. Yeah. Like, should you be? Yeah. And and I think I just like so there was like situations at work where it would be and this is where training helped me at work, where if there was a chaotic situation where we had to go like hands on or something crazy happened, I like I'm used to chaos training. So I was like knew how to be like boom, 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 get it done. And like they'd be like, Oh wow, like then I got my respect. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you had to, then you had almost I got had to my prove respect. yourself first. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, I knew this all along, and I didn't care if you didn't know it, because I knew it. I that's know who I am. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. Yeah. How many of the people you work with trained at uh, all? Like, I'm talking anything. Back in Lockheed, at the jail, zero. Well, no, one guy did. And then, I'm pretty sure, no, uh, two guys. And then, um, um... Okay, and I might be wrong about that. If they like watch us and they're like, like, I trained, she never knew, I like, didn't know. Yeah. And not then, many to your knowledge, right? Yeah, and then Clinton County, when I worked as my first job as a PO, um, I was training and then I got people to train. And that's when I was able to like start doing GST because they saw like this was legit. And then I actually taught the department, like I was the certified instructor for like that's dope. That DT. We got to bring, we got to bring this some. Little well, girl, this little yeah. girl, this little girl's teaching. So. <laughs> Those are the ones you got to watch out for. <laughs> yeah. The quiet ones, the quiet ones. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so yeah, and that's funny that that most of the the people, I'll say people because it, it, it could be guys and girls. Most of the people who are the loudest, mm -hmm. especially in law enforcement, don't train a lick. Mm -hmm. Don't don't do it. They show up nine to five, mm -hmm. and they think because they wear this shiny thing right here mm -hmm. and have this big heavy metal thing on their side mm -hmm. that they, they just command respect. And it's like, bro, I, I do. I have the same thing as you. Yeah. Like, why are you trying to check me? And that, and we get that with new officers or new oh, yeah. new 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 people in law enforcement. Yeah. The old heads try to like, uh, you know, almost kind of like that ego thing again. Mm -hmm. And you're like, bro, like, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm, I'm here to learn. I'm not trying to, like, overstep or anything. And yeah. I think that's the best way to come about it is how you do it. Just be like, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to. I know. I'll show you. Yeah. yeah. I'll, sh I'll show you when the time comes. And I think it kind of goes into, like, I forget what you just said, it, but made me, like, kind of, like, think of this. So it's kind of similar to, like, all right, you know how to train. You know how to defend yourself. So if, if some random guy at a bar started a problem with you, Probably like you, if you never trained, you might talk back and get loud with him. But you yourself, you know, you're a big guy, tatted up. People probably try to mess with you. You're at a bar, be like, yeah, man, all right, cool. Because you know how to handle it. So same thing at like if if something happened at at the job where it's just chaos. People are screaming. I'm sure you understand. Like, oh, yeah, I'm just like, okay. People are screaming at you. And like it could have, I could have leveled up with you and matched your energy you and went hands it. on when I didn't need to. But a lot of times it helped me like, all right, if I have to handle you, I can. I also have someone with me. So I feel like we, well, we, we will be able to handle you. But like, I don't want to. I don't want to fill out a report I don't after need this. To. Yeah, it's like, like I don't need to. Yeah. So I'm going to use my words. I'm going to talk to you. All right, cool. That's Verbal fine. judo, man. It's all right, man. Hey, that's cool. Like yeah, training will, helps you me. You will whoop my ass. Yeah, Not absolutely. trained. You know what I mean? Training helps me not train out on the outside because I just know I can. I know I can handle it. Yeah, and it's 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 funny you mention that because growing up, I never learned how to fight, but I always fought. I was always in the street fighting. It was like a this is what I got to do thing. And then when I started like training and like I started fighting less. Yeah. And like you mentioned at the bar, I 
I don't know why. Dude. I am a big dude. People always come and they, oh, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. hey, what's up, bro? I'm like, watch yourself. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. D- didn't see you there. And I'm like, what yeah. the fuck was that about? Like, but like, I always get picked on in bars and stuff. And it's yeah. like, they try, it's like jail. Find the biggest dude and try to fight. And I'm just like, dude, back in the day, I'd have lost my shit. Exactly. But it's like, why now? Like, yeah. We're going to get into it. I'm going to put my elbow through your face and then I'm going to get in trouble because yeah. it's going to come out that. I do train. I could have de-escalated when I did. And then, like, nobody wins. Yeah. Nobody wins at that. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, it's good points. Signing with Invicta, how was that process? Did so, they approach you, or was it stuff you were looking for? How does that work? Mm-hmm. Well, shout out to my management company, LCA. Shout out to LCA. Uh, shout out to LCA. They're great. So I started, uh, everybody really backlashes getting a manager. They're like, or like bad talks about it. Uh, they're like, oh, don't get one. It's bad, blah, blah, blah. And when we, and when I started in the beginning of like going pro, quit my job, the beginning of that process, we were finding it very difficult to find me a fight. So we were like, all right, maybe manager's not so bad. Had a couple reach out to me. And I went with LCA and um, nothing but good things from them. I mean, like, I get no bad, like, they just, I don't know. They don't, like, pressure me into something that's, like, if if, if I'm offered, like, some 7-0 and girl for a debut, all knockouts, they're like, yeah, this probably isn't the smartest choice for your first fight. And we're like, yeah, of course. It's like a, another mentor giving me, a, it's not like I it's get, like, like yeah, they're yeah. not, like, trying to just get money from me, you know? So um, it's crazy how it all happened because it happened at the same time LFA was offered when I was supposed to debut for LFA. And they're like, oh, you know, Shannon, she's like the president of, or like the owner, not sure her exact title, like she is the head of Invicta. And they're like, oh, she's asking about you. She'd like to do a fight deal with you. Um, And I was like, wow, that is so cool. Like if, and I had to like, Cause there I'm like still battling the mindset of like, okay, yeah, well just getting a fight deal, but it doesn't mean anything. Like I'm still nothing. Like haven't fought yet for them, blah, blah, blah. But if you would have told me when I first started, oh, Invicta, like you're going to sign with Invicta. Cause like I always, I think Invicta is this like great, it's awesome. It's, it's like a huge the step to get yeah. to the UFC. So yeah, they, they um, reached out and they kind of like hit up my management. They're like, oh, you know, we'd like to sign with her. And um, I signed for a deal with them, for a fight deal. So we'll see how that goes. Um, it could very well be the uh, stepping stone for the UFC. I mean, for Invicta, if you look at their roster and, like, the legends that have come out in Invicta, it's crazy. I mean, Rose Namajunas started there. Alexa Grasso started there. Um, I should name a lot more girls. There's a lot. Or I think... Mm, I actually don't know if she started there. But there's a lot of girls that are now in the UFC or were in the UFC and champions, and they started out with Invicta. So it's pretty pretty awesome to be a part of it. So this is so this is like a this is this is the next step in your in your MMA career, right? Yeah, yeah. That's dope, man. And how how, how does it feel to because like you haven't competed through them yet, right? Mm-mm. But you've done a lot of fight. You've you've had some fights under your belt. How how is that? being able to compete at that at that level yeah um because you're at a level that for you to get signed <laughs> you have to be at a at a at a certain level in your yeah. competition career yeah which is crazy because like you don't see it it's very flattering that they look at me like that yeah i, mean, I haven't it, gone pro like i'm i'm professional now but haven't had a first fight yet so um it's a uh, uh it's very um i don't know because my last fight we weren't allowed to throw elbows. wasn't like five minute rounds, but you know there was like ground and pound and like I guess I just I kind of like take all these fights and I I look at all of them the same. Just gonna do what is what needs to be done, and I know what I have to do to get there. And um, to I think like as time goes by, you don't realize the levels up that you're giving yourself. Like you're leveling up yourself. Like every 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 day that goes by and you really are working to get better, you really are getting better. Sometimes it's hard to see as a whole, but if I look back to me even just a year ago, like I've just completely like 
leveled up my entire game. So I think to compete at that stage, like I'm definitely ready for that because I'm just going to look at it straight on and I'm just going to do it. Just like when I worked at Mac McDonald's and I got to take these orders and I got to give you your money. I'm just going to do just it it's in front of it. me. I'm just going to do it. It's all, it's like the gym, right? Like you go to the gym one and I remember my first day at the gym. I like, I did curls cause you got to do curls yeah. at the gym and I go to, I go home and it feels tight and, and I'm like, kind of pumped and i'm like did they grow and i'm looking at that but you don't see that growth yeah right? like you, you lift you go home there's no growth yeah the next day you lift you go home there's no growth yeah but then you you look six months down the road from when you started and there's growth and yeah. you're like when when did this growth occur yeah you can't pinpoint it you can't look and be like oh on december 2nd 2012 that's when my my bicep grew an inch or that's when my shoulders grew like you don't see the growth every day, but if you can point where you started or like pick a point and then pick a point at the end of like your comparison, like, damn, man, I've, I've grown so much. Mm -hmm. Same with football. Mm -hmm. My freshman year, they put me at corner. I couldn't rotate my hips. I couldn't like, the only hip movement I have is salsa and bachata, you know, like from yeah. dancing, yeah. Like, which is a whole different, you know? And then by my my junior career, uh, my my junior career, my junior year, mm -hmm. I'm we're looking film and I'm like, damn, yo, I've gotten all right. I've yeah. gotten all right. Like, damn. Yeah. I kept up with this dude. This dude was like, everyone was talking about this guy. I was able to keep up with him. Like, yeah. we don't see that growth every day, but you know, one day you look in the mirror and you're like, fuck, I, I like, look where I'm at. I am him. Yeah, I am I him. Am him. <laughs> like, think about when you started training in that. You know, the, the top floor oh, of that jujitsu gym. It's crazy. And it's then now crazy. I see your videos of uh, you on the wall, you you taking punches, you yeah. punching. It's like, how much growth have you seen in that? Oh my God. I mean, like, if you really look at it, because I'm like, oh, I quit my job and I took a huge risk, blah, blah, blah. But if you really look at it, like, I'm living a dream where, you know, we train because we love it. You know, and, and I heard when you were talking to Dempsey, like you talk to people and you love their stories because you love you love to hear about it. And like, imagine that's just your life one day. Like, and that was like me starting out at that gym. And and if you would have told me, zoop, fast forward, this will be your life one day. You're working hard right now, and you're, it's gonna be your life one day. I'd be like, sick. That's all I need. Yeah, I'm good. Ain't, ain't, wouldn't that be nice yeah. if someone could just show you five years this is where you're gonna be yeah you're gonna be like oh everything i'm doing is worth actually yeah. i'm gonna step it up yeah i'm gonna step it up because i know that's where i'm gonna be so i, I want to get there faster yeah but we don't get that luxury yeah but yeah. if you can apply that like what, what what do they say like if you if you dream it or, or oh if you dream it you can achieve it if you is dream it, it you can achieve okay. it it's like bring it to life you yeah. know um, oh, manifest. Remember? Manifest. Yeah. That's okay. I speak manifest. two languages, so hey. bear with me. Manifest. You can manifest things, and if you just like point, put paint that picture in your head of that's that's in five years, that's where I'm going to be. Yeah. And and Dempsey talked about this, and it it made so much sense. Like, this is your gold medal. Fighting in the UFC is your gold medal. You need to win a thousand gold medals oh. before that. Yeah. A thousand goals that no one will ever see. Mm -hmm. What are those goals for you? So it, your end goal is what? Fighting in a in a major promotion, mm -hmm. UFC. Mm -hmm. What are your what are your goals to get there? What are things that you have you put things down on paper in your brain of like, you know, I want to go, you know, I, I, I want to fight this girl because she's very, you know, she's very good at her career. Eventually, I want to get to her, or you know, I want to be able to go five rounds without being gassed. I want, like, mm -hmm. what are your what are your tiny goals that you have set? Mm. Tiny goals. Well, obviously, win my first fight. Win your first fight. Uh, and just um, tiny goals. So I definitely, yeah, win my first fight. Like, I would love to just like be undefeated. Like, I mean, I know loss is inevitable. Started out my MMA career with a loss. So, um, and just kind of like reminding myself to like see the end in sight the whole time when it starts to get like I would say right now it's kind of like hard because you know haven't had a fight yet been trying to have a fight 
going through that, like, oh, I just, you know, I quit my job, I'm here, and I'm, like, still haven't had a fight, like, what am I doing? And, like, battling that mindset, like, no, stay on the right track, like, it's going to be okay. And so, like, tiny goals, it's, like, dude, it's, I don't know, because I just want to win that first fight. It's really all I care about right now. You're result-oriented. That's, and I, and, uh, but here's the thing. I want to say I want to win that first fight, but I do definitely recognize that uh, it could not go your way. And but as long as what I control right now is my training and what I'm giving into it, so I definitely know that because that's how I treated my last fights. So like if 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 I did everything I possibly can and I know that, because you can say it out loud to like, oh yeah, man, I lost, but I did everything I can, and someone's gonna be like, yeah, that's cool, that's great. But if you're lying to yourself, I know that I skipped mornings. I know that I skipped practice. I know that I did that, but I'm not going to tell them that. I'm just going to be like, yeah, I did everything I can. But at the end of the day, I have to look with myself, look at myself and live with that. Like, did I do everything I can for this first fight, for this next fight? You know, continue doing that. Um, Also, I definitely think a goal of mine is to give, like, the world-class, like, coaching that we have here, like, the recognition that it deserves. You know, I definitely want to, like, show people, like, oh, no, like, we, we have that here, too. Like, just wait and see. Like, we, we're about that here. The fight scene in, in Pittsburgh is, in the last couple of years has, like, gotten insane. And I know Mike has a big name. I remember when he coached, I'm like, man, that dude's an awesome coach, awesome person, very personable, like, spoke with me after class, everything. And then um, I find him on Instagram, and I'm like, "Damn, this dude's actually this dude's legit. Mm-hmm. Like, he's he's legit." Then I start following his shit and stuff like that, and I'm like, "Oh wow, this dude's actually like really good." And oh, then I'm yeah. going to other gyms, I'm cross training, I'm speaking with people, and people were like, "Oh, you're at Style, dude, Mike? Yeah, dude." Yeah. I'm like, "Dude, dude carries a yeah. name. He carries weight, and it, like." But we get that about every. I get that about you, Seabird. That little motherfucker is like yeah. insane, yeah, dude. People were talking boy. about him yeah. already, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm like, and then uh, someone mentioned to me like, "Yeah, man, he wants to meet you." I'm like, I want to meet him. Yeah. Like, I want to meet him, dude. When I was at the last style fights and dude front flipped into the the mat, I'm yeah. like, dude, this is about to be this is about to be nuts. Yeah. I'm at the edge of my seat. Yeah. I'm watching this. He's cartwheeling. He's. I'm like, this dude's sick. Yeah. That's here. Yeah, here. Like, we train yeah. at the same gym. Yeah. Like, we train at the same gym. I love that All you say of, that about me. Like, yeah, we train. We do. It's like, crazy. Wilkins. We train at the yeah. same gym. Like, yeah. there's so much talent. And that's why I started this podcast. And I don't want to say unfortunately, because a lot of my listeners are MMA and, and fighters and stuff like that. But some of them are not. Mm-hmm. But I think there's so many lessons that can be derived from people who train from people who do stuff like this and the reason i started this podcast is because there's so much talent that surrounds us in every aspect that if you were walking down the street in another city no one's going to paint an eye at you Mm -hmm. like you're just another person but if they got to know you if they got to talk to you they're like dude she's freaking dope same with every everyone i've had on my podcast like well some like dempsey i mean a lot of people know dempsey but if you're in the MMA world, you do. Yeah. If you're not, you're not really going to know. But yeah. you can take so many lessons from that guy. And he's so personable. Yeah. And, like, if this this podcast, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of selfish, too, because in talking with you guys and talking with you, I'm, like, learning so much about myself. I'm pulling inspiration. I'm pulling motivation. It's like, dude, man, like, I, I know I'm going to leave him like, oh, that, that talk with Britt was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm gonna go home, start editing yeah. it, and start, I'm like, man, this this, this shit's great. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that point. I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight that point. Like it, <laughs> it's sick. Like and you're not gonna see it, and then you're gonna watch the episode. You'll be like, damn, I did eat that. Yeah. I did it. I already yeah. know. I hope yeah. so. Anyway. Yeah. <sighs> what are some of the challenges? You mentioned your training. What are the, some of the challenges of being like an MMA fighter? Because there's one thing of like training. Like I, I come to jujitsu. I haven't taken you do the uh, MMA class, right? Yeah. I haven't yet to take one of those here. I'd like to. Mm-hmm. Might have to start doing that. Um, what what's the, what's it like? Not being a hobbyist anymore, and mm-hmm. being like, this is what I'm doing. What's yeah. the, what are some of those challenges with like weight cuts and nutrition and training? 
Yeah. What are some things you found to be difficult? Um, I think, uh, so in regards to just like being challenges as an MMA fighter as a whole, because when I was fighting, I was still working. So, but it was never just a hobby to me. I definitely like, it was, I had two jobs. I had my career and I had this career and I treated both the same. Now I just had to take one stress away and now I just worry about this all the time. I have all my focus on to just training every single day, teaching every single day, teaching makes me better. Um, so I think like the struggle is it's, it's mental, like it's mental stuff. I think it's your own self can be like the biggest struggle that like if you're leading up to a fight, um, when it comes to like, I mean, weight, cu cutting weight sucks, no matter how you do it. Just sucks. Not fun. Don't like it. But you got to do I, it. I wouldn't know. The, like, <laughs> I can't cut weight. <laughs> do, it, do it for fun. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Be miserable for fun. <laughs> uh, so, and that stuff's just kind of like the outside factors of like, you know, it's you put in, you get out. Like, if I put in the hard work, I'm going to cut weight. I'm going to make it. Like, the result of the fight. Uh, that's the unknown. That's kind of like the hard part. And I think that's the mental game leading up to a fight. You start to kind of like, maybe you start to doubt yourself. You go through a bunch of emotions, man, through this process. Just think about like a hard class and you thought you'd walk in. Maybe let's say you had a tough day at work. You walked in, you weren't really catching what was going on. Maybe someone that you normally like not beat up because I don't want to say like we beat each other up all the time, but you normally, you know, do well against them and maybe they're tapping you left and right. And you're like, you leave and you're like, what am I doing? It's the same thing with fighting. It's the same thing. Like with this being my job now, sometimes I'm like, what am I doing? I'm not, I just got mopped up today. I just got beat up today, but you gotta be like, throw it away. I'm okay. I'm fine. Gonna have bad days. I'll be all right. I think that is kind of like, trying to remind yourself when it's not working out to stay on the same track. And it kind of like touched on that a little bit before, but that's like the biggest part is like the mental aspect of it because injuries are going to happen. Like when I first started jujitsu, it tore my labrum, missed like a year because it just, I had to like recover from it. It was a huge, like something I had to like overcome to come back and like rehabilitate my shoulder and like, you know, um, you know, that was like a probably a harder time than each each phase of your career. You're going to go through these hard times and you're going to have to like um, remind yourself like, nope, this is just a, a, a little piece of it right now. But like it's going to work out in the end, you know. So, you know, the day in and day out training, it's kind of hard because I like it. I also love to work out and train. So but there's days I don't want to. And then, um, you know, the weight cutting, that, that, like, always sucks. But I think the biggest part is just the battle with yourself is probably the biggest thing that I think a lot of fighters definitely deal with is the mental battle with yourself. What advice would you give people trying to do this? Like, how do you overcome that mental battle? What keeps you grounded? Yeah. Um, I think it's, like, changed with things that I've just overcome throughout the years where, you know, I mean, if you look back to, like, ACL, I had to sit out. I understood that this will get better, and I'm going to be back. When I, like, first started and, you know, I was, like, working two jobs, full-time student, want to train. No one really, like, knew what I wanted to do. Like, my family didn't know jiu-jitsu and, and anything, like, regarding fighting. Um, just kind of, like, understanding that, like, push through this, push through that. It's like, put your head down and keep going because there's definitely going to be times that you're not going to believe in yourself. You always have to try to keep that hope, but there's definitely going to be like that self doubt's going to start like creeping in and it's going to start, you know, there's going to be times where, you know, training's just not clicking. Um, maybe like outside factors in the gym are happening and it's just like not good. It's just hard. Like, it's just a hard process right now. But this sounds so corny. Sounds so corny. I can't believe I'm about to say it. Say it. But, like, this too shall pass. I would say right now I'm going through one of those hard times with training because I haven't been able to get a fight. I'm just kind of in this, you know, haven't competed in a while. That's weird for me. It's kind of hard for me to deal with. But I have to still show up every single day. 
and like it's going to happen. I can't see it right now. I don't. I didn't sign a contract. I don't have a fight scheduled right now. It's going to happen. So in those times of just like you know, um, where it is hard, just know that that's going to pass. But it's going to happen again. You're going to have a good time, and then you're going to have another hard time. You know, keep your head down. Keep going. Just don't stop. Simply got to where I am right now because I never stopped. I never stopped. I had an injury when I first started. Never stopped. Had jobs that I had to like leave to go training for, or like I moved city. I moved from like Lock Haven to here, you know, like changes in my life. Like I just never stopped. That's all I did. So I never stopped. Keep that momentum. Yeah. Keep that momentum. Yeah. Yeah, because as soon as I feel like as soon as you stop, as soon as you slow down, as soon as you give in to that friction, that's when like things can start spiraling the other way. But if you keep that momentum, however slight, you know, because you're not going to be a, a, a train steamrolling all the time. Yeah. But if the momentum keeps going and pushing forward, like you're going to end up so far ahead. Yeah. Rather than vice versa. And I yeah. mentioned, I forget who I mentioned this with, but it's like it's like a slippery slope, right? If you stop, you're essentially going to fall backwards. Yeah. But if you continue to crawl, no matter how slight, you're either going to stay where you're at or continue forward. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. How's your, does your girl train? No. So how does she, she feel about all this? <laughs> I, I got I to gotta throw that out. How'd she, because it, it's yeah. one thing to like do this for fun. And it's yeah. like, that's another thing. Like you, you get into a ring and a chick on the other side wants to like finish yeah, you it's crazy like she wants to finish you you want to finish her yeah someone ends up on top yeah someone ends up hurt yeah like whether you get punched in the face that hurts i mean i get punched in the face all the time it hurts yeah. it sucks there's not like oh, i enjoy this and if yeah. you say that you're something's crazy. wrong yeah something's wrong or you're lying yeah so i how, how did how does she feel about all that i'm very very fortunate she's very supportive about it um you know, that was a big factor. I'm like, oh, I'm going to quit my job. How do you feel about that? You know? Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, what? Yeah. Uh, what? what? I need you to sign this contract before I quit, though. No, leave it. Yeah. Um, she, uh, she's definitely, like, very supportive, very understands that, like, when I met her, I was already, like, full into this, like, had fights okay. under my belt, like, definitely, like, was who I was, like, me, but I also worked, too. Um, and I kind of like told her from the beginning, she was like, I remember when I met you, you like made it very clear trainings first. And I was like, all right, that sounds so bad. Cause like, you know, not heartless. <laughs> now they're even, now they're even. <laughs> yeah. And, um, no, but she really understands that I, because it's, a, uh, it's, um, you gotta have the support. Cause like I said, those times where you don't believe in yourself. Because it sounds like so bad, I should be like, you need to always believe in yourself. I don't believe in myself all the time. I don't know if others well, it's, it's do. It's a fallacy. But like, like if you're if you're gonna sit here and say I, I believe in myself 100 percent all the time, yeah. like, all right, dude, you you've unlocked the secret. Yeah. Curve, like share it with everyone. Yeah. But un unfortunately, that's not that's not life. That's not realistic. And there yeah. are times where self doubt creeps in. But it's the ability to like check yourself and be like, yo, hold on. Yeah. And if you can't, having that support system that yeah. does, like, how has being surrounded oh, yeah. by these, 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 the, the fight team, because the, and Stout in general, but the fight team, everyone has the same goal. Yeah. Build each other up to compete for the competition level. Has yeah. that helped you oh, yeah. with that self doubt, yeah. like surrounding yourself full time rather than like having to work and, and like, you know, guys at work, you know, they hate their lives, yeah. they hate their wives, they yeah. hate their husband. It's like, what are you doing then? Like, yeah. what, quit. Yeah. If you hate this, quit. Yeah. Well, I can't quit. I need my pension. Like, yeah. And that's not everyone, but we, you've experienced it. I've experienced it. How has removing yourself from that environment and putting yourself in an environment of like minded individuals who just yeah. want to eat? They're hungry. And when one, you know, when that self doubt kicks in, how does that help that group setting? Oh man, the nail on the head. So like when that starts to kick in, I would say like that support system, like you have the guys like, like, like someone will just like say like, oh yeah, like when you, like, you know, when you make it to the UFC or like, you know, they will talk you up when you're feeling down on yourself. They'll be like, yeah, but like, dude, you did great on this, but like, you're, you're killing it. Like, who cares? Like, 
like you've inspired me to do that like and you'll hear that from someone else and you're like oh wow like I need to remind myself like I'm gonna be okay like I'm doing okay right now and I think that's where when the self-doubt creeps in like our team's so good for it we're all support each other and I think we can like we'll know each other pretty well like you know some someone that I train with a lot I'm probably friends with too and and I'll be like oh are you all right today like and we're always just there for each other you know because we know if you're really in this you know your mind is wild leading up to a fight you know your mind is so wild so, huh. again dude we can't win here today I don't even know where the sensor is if you just keep moving it will work hold on do you want me to walk around real quick there we go. There you go. Hit a little combo. Should have hit a little yeah, combo. Have, should have hit a cartwheel right yeah, there. Dude. Dude, do the Lucas. <laughs> do a little flip. <laughs> I'm like, pull something, dude. That dude's nimble. Dude, he really is. And he's he's like like one of the guys I'm talking about. I've gotten really close with him this past year. We both train basically full time. And um, he's, you know, like he, he will help me through. Like if I'm, you know, I'll be like, oh, man, I'm just like, you know, and. Like, he's someone that, like, yeah, but they kind of, like, help talk you out of it. And, like, other guys are like that, too. And, like, Mike and Will, they're great for it, too. Just like you said, like, the support system of just, like, your mind will just creep you into, like, a bad place. And then you, it's good, like, when you can't take yourself out of it, you'll hear someone else be like, yeah, but, like, Brit, uh, look what you're doing or something. And you'll be like, oh, you're right, you know. And, and, and my girlfriend's great with that, too. Um, shout out Emily. So shout out Emily. Shout out Emily, M Dog Millionaire. M Dude, that's, that's, got the name. That's her. That's her name. Aunt, I better see Aunt that Millie. on a t-shirt, man. Aunt Millie. Dude, she's gonna be famous because she's so great. She's very supportive. Um, she's uh, she just she's just truly wonderful. She's been taking you know, she's low key our photographer of of Stout. Oh, so cool. See a lot of pictures come up or of the fight of the fight team, not like okay. of Stout because you know we also got Paul. Shout out yeah. Paul Luke Photos. Love that guy. I see his name around Love too. Love him yeah. so much. He's another guy too. Like everybody. Even like you like saying good good thing. Yeah. Oh, Britt, but it's thank you. And I'm like, man, thank you. And it's just like good to hear, you know, kind words from others and have people pick you up when you're down. You know, definitely have a good support system around me. Well, I, I will say this. You like you falling is not an option because of the team you have behind you so yeah. i see a lot of crazy things happening in yeah. your future like yeah i'm excited i'm not even a part but i'm excited yeah. like I'm, I'm in the corner like fucking, fucking. Oh, like I'm, ex I'm excited when too. you had that you announced that you you were supposed to have a fight mm -hmm. i'm like oh, i gotta go to this one i gotta oh, go to this one gotta, and i was so excited mm. and then i'm like i was gonna reach out and i'm like uh, if, if I'm upset, I, I can only imagine how she feels. So I'm, I'm, I'm just not gonna fucking say yeah. anything. But it um, would have been okay if you did. It would have totally. No, I know. But it, that was, and that's what I mean. The hard times are. Yeah, going you're like to up, happen. up, up, and then oh, perfect, slammed. And you're like, perfectly oh. explained. I was like, boom, like Invicta LFA. This is wonderful. LFA debut, short notice. I'm a dog. I'm gonna do this. Weeks notice. Let's go. Let's go win. This is gonna be great. I'm gonna go celebrate after. And then got the text that she pulled out, and it just crashed. And I was like in disbelief. I was like, no way. And you almost can't say anything because you're like, I yeah. just, I just hype myself up. Like, yeah. what is there to say right now? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, nah, man. I, I can't even. Ima I can't imagine. Yeah. I can't imagine. What's uh, what's next for you? What's uh, what's in a limelight? What's next? What's next? Is what can people expect from Brit the... I was going to come up with a nickname. Dude, Brit the dog. Brit, Brit the... Brit the dog. D's. Brick the Bick. Brick the Bick. Okay. Ooh. Little Bicky. Little Bicky. Little Bicky action over here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not coin that. <laughs> well, from, from little Bicky over here, you can expect... Um, that's a shirt too. Well, Lil whenever Bicky. I like that. Little Bicky. Um, lit like Bick. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk after. Uh, so, dude, the best version of me. I've t totally just leveled up since I've gone full time. I mean, oh my gosh, like love it. And um, you can just expect relentless effort from me to be the best. She did it. He didn't tell me she to say plugged, that. Either. I didn't. He didn't tell me. I, I should have did that. Me, yeah, he didn't tell me I just did that. that. She did it. 
I just did Brit that. Brit the big did it. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's kind of hard because, like, I'm not trying to, like, harp on the first fight, but that's, like, what I have my eyes on. But uh, every time I fight, it's always exciting to watch. I will say that about myself. People are, I don't know, I, I think I like to show, I don't know, because I have that gritty, you know, my last fight I was stuck in a triangle choke for, like, two and a half minutes and got out of yeah that. i saw dude it was crazy who dude. did you post that someone but i remember looking at that i'm like i think it was like a they did like a highlight clip yeah, of it that was fight. wild yeah. and i'm like yeah because i didn't know the outcome of the fight yeah so i'm like dude this like is this it this yeah. no it can't be and it just kept going and i'm like oh stuck. dude when you i'm like i was stuck I, yeah. like, I, don't, I got big shoulders so if yeah. i could put in one like i'm going to sleep just, immediately yeah if i can't break it it's it's nap time yeah. and you just like relentlessness ate it ate it ate it with that relents relentless Dude, that's mind crazy. that's crazy i said get out of here with that we you thought we, different we don't need that we don't need that yeah here. you thought i stood up I'm like you thought boom did, did i like did you get up like kind of like surprised or like angry like you know what i don't even know you just did that here toma in spanish that's like what you say when okay you have someone. Doma? Doma. i yeah. like that it's like, I like, it's like that. almost like here like take it okay like I gotta remember that. Oh, if you I'm say, gonna start saying if that, you say that yeah, toma, toma, toma. So my buddy, the first episode I had, um, Devin Sigfrey, he just became pro boxer. I saw that. Yeah, it's and awesome. And he he'll say that like when he's sparring and stuff, yeah. just to mess around. But when he's fighting, guess what he says? And he didn't even notice this until I called it out. What? Ish, 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 ish. ish. Oh, oh my god! Like, like, <laughs> like oh, he, he, he's giving me shout outs with every hit. Yeah. Uh, that's dope. <laughs> He's actually Never fighting the 28th is. at the Meadows. So. Oh, okay. That's what, there's a poster up for that, I think, in the gym. Yeah. Oh, is yeah. there? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he'll be there. Okay. Who you Are you going to the fights tonight? Yeah, I'm going. Wow, that's tonight. Forgot. That is tonight. Like that's what I want to record today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's tonight. Yeah. yeah. I'll be there all weekend. I'll be there tonight and tomorrow. So I might go tomorrow. I okay. want to see, see some of the fights tomorrow. But tonight, I, you know, I want to see Lucas. I want to see you know, Nikki Raw is about to be Dude, crazy. Crazy. Like, like awesome. I don't even know how that came about, but I'm glad yeah. it did. Um, how is that going to, is that going to be like back to back or like so everyone gets. What they're going to do is uh, three minute or no, three rounds. So three people each are eight minute rounds. And if he subs you, you keep going. Or if you sub him, because not like they could sub him, you know. But uh, yeah, they just keep going. It's like a shark tank <laughs> at practice. Bro, what? Yeah. Like you yeah. sub me. My, your me like your mindset's <laughs> crushed already. Like you just got me in that. Go again. Yeah. <laughs> So props to everyone doing that. No, that's that would be exciting to watch. No, imagine so. leaving there being like, I sub Nicky Rod. Oh my God. If Let's that do it. okay, if someone subs him, their life's changing tonight. That like think it. think about that. You're knocking off one of the best right now. Especially the first if the first guy subs him. Oh dude. Like you got him fresh. I think. I don't know. I don't know. But I think the first guy's Cody Gamble. But I might be wrong. That's yeah, I, I didn't want to say the name because I don't I don't remember the lineup. Yeah. Um might be wrong about that but no nah, it's about tonight's about to be exciting yeah i'm gonna be there yeah. look for the relentless I'll, I'll see you i'll see <laughs> yeah. you doma doma yeah that's the first thing i better hear <laughs> no nah, well i appreciate you for jumping on yeah. i really do i'm humbled um this this is i think it's gonna be a good episode you were great you are great and you're gonna be great be so, great dude i'm i'm excited for what's to come and i appreciate you for being here this is the one with brit bickhart dude thank you so much i appreciate thank it thank you later you've been listening to the relentless project ish lopez grew up in the heart of the inner city but he managed to build multiple income streams join the ranks of law enforcement and dive into countless ventures all thanks to the incredible relationships he forged along the way and now his passion is to share those stories with you make sure to connect with us on social media find ish on twitter and instagram at the ish lopez and the show at relentless prjct we're on all the major streaming platforms, from Spotify to Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts, and wherever you like to catch your favorite shows. See you next time on The Relentless Project. Project.